I am uh, Dr. Robert Vernoy. I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist, which is a heart rhythm specialist, and I'm the director of the EP lab here at RMH, and we treat all types of heart rhythm disorders here at Rocky Memorial Hospital. As a heart rhythm doctor, I see any time uh, there's a problem with the heart rhythm, and that could be the fact that the rhythm goes too fast or it goes too slow. Typically, if you have a critically slow heart rhythm, we treat that with a pacemaker. Sometimes you can have life-threatening fast heart rhythms that are best treated with an implantable defibrillator, um, and sometimes we use medicines, but then there's also fast heart rhythms that uh, can be correctable or curable, theoretically, uh, with an ablation procedure. An ablation procedure involves putting catheters in the heart that allows us to pace the heart from different locations locations. By doing this, we're able to determine the exact location where the patient's arrhythmia is originating from. Once we've found that location, we're able to go up with a different catheter and ablate that area or destroy it so that the patient doesn't have those symptoms and experience that arrhythmia. A patient is a candidate for an ablation uh, depending on what type of arrhythmia they have. Most types of upper chamber rhythms that are regular, we call SVT or supraventricular tachycardia, or even atrial flutter, ablation um, is, uh, is considered first line therapy because it's so effective with relatively low risks. And so ablation can be curative in many situations for those type of arrhythmias. To prepare for the ablation procedure, a patient comes to an interview two or three days ahead of time, and it's during that discussion where he learns about the procedure. When the patient arrives the morning of procedure, the first thing that's going to happen is that we have them change to a hospital gown. We're going to answer any questions they may have, and I stay with the patient before, during, and after the procedure. It is for a continuity of care and patient safety. Once we have you uh, comfortable and sedated, we'll then place catheters through special IVs into the heart and start the first phase of the procedure, which is the electrophysiology study. That's where we're navigating all the catheters that have electrodes on them into special places of the heart. So what we'll do then is use pacing maneuvers or adrenaline-type drugs to speed up the heart to create the abnormal heart rhythm. Then we can localize exactly where the tissue is. Then the next phase, we work to ablate it. We use several different types of catheters during an ablation. One type utilizes radio waves to produce heat at the tip of the catheter. When the catheter comes in contact with the cells that are causing the patient's arrhythmia, it destroys them. Another type of catheter that we use is a cryo balloon. This balloon utilizes nitrogen to freeze the cells. The intense cold is able to destroy them and destroy the location of the arrhythmia. So many people wonder how successful cardiac ablation is and, and for certain types of arrhythmias, and it really depends. Um, for uh, many arrhythmias, especially most types of SVT that happens in young people, but sometimes can happen in older people, success rates are very high. Certain uh, extra beats or ventricular arrhythmias can be uh, effectively treated and, and many times cured. Atrial fibrillation is one area where ablation isn't as successful, but it still has a very important role. We have to affect a lot of tissue, and that tissue sometimes can recover or new areas can pop up over time. That's why the ablation for AFib is more to manage symptoms and can decrease episodes. AFib ablation is more effective than antiarrhythmic drug therapy, medicines, so it's in a very important uh, procedure for patients with symptomatic atrial fibrillation. As far as the recovery from the ablation procedure, um, what we have you recover first in our post-EP cath lab recovery area. There we will keep you on bed rest for at least two hours. Then we can begin to uh, get you up out of bed. And many times people can go home the same day. Once you go home, depending on the type of work you do, you could be back to work within a few days. The good thing is you'll be walking home. You're not gonna be bedridden and, or recovering and, and hopefully you'll have residual pain at those sites that go away within a few days.